Okay, so next we're going to look at prepositions and what are called prepositional phrases, and we'll see how these play a role um, within the grammar. So the brown corpus uses the tag I am to refer to what's called a preposition. And a preposition is um, a word such as of or in or out or beside or as. A preposition can usually go in front of a noun phrase. So I can say, for example, of the man. This would be a prepositional phrase. Or in the room would be another prepositional phrase. OK. So given the idea of prepositions, let's see how we can incorporate these in the grammar. And what I've shown you here is uh, the same grammar I had on the previous slide, except I'm going to add a couple of rules. So firstly, I'm going to have a rule that says a PP, this is a prepositional phrase, can be formed from an IN followed by a noun phrase. And I have various rules specifying that an IN, a preposition, can be words such as in or under or of or on or with or as and so on. There are probably roughly, I think, 100 prepositions in English. That's a rough order of magnitude. So that's the first rule, saying a, a prepositional phrase can be formed by a preposition followed by a noun phrase. So for example, I can have a prepositional phrase uh, such as the follow, following. Uh, so in NP. So incidentally, I'll sometimes use this triangle notation to mean that there is some subtree under the grammar which I haven't fully specified, just because it would be very tedious to write out all their inter in intermediate structure in this NP. What I would really have here is an application of rules such as determiner n bar, n bar goes to n, and n goes to room. But this is useful shorthand when you want to hide the details. So a prepositional phrase can be formed from the tag in, followed by an NP, and that means it can be formed by a preposition followed by some noun phrase. So let's go a little bit further with these rules and see how we can use them. So um, if we take, uh, again, we can create a prepositional phrase from an IN followed by an NP. So the NP could, for example, be the car. And then I'm going to use this rule here to say that I can form an N bar by an N bar followed by a PP. And then finally, I'll use this rule again at the very top. NP goes to determiner N bar. And so I can have something like the dog in the car. Okay. So what's going on here? Um, now I have some noun, dog, and actually I have a post modifier to this noun. This prepositional phrase comes after the noun and modifies it and actually specifies where the dog is in the car in this case. And so this rule, n bar goes to n bar pp, says that I can take a noun, take a prepositional phrase, and use the prepositional phrase as a post modifier to um, this particular n bar. And so I get this full noun phrase now. So the noun phrase is this full sequence of words, the dog in the car. And it's worth noting that, again, these rules are going to be recursive. So I can build up larger sequences of prepositional phrase modifiers. So I can say, for example, the dog. OK, and again, notice that I have used this rule, n bar goes to n bar pp. And then I have in goes to in. This time, I am actually going to specify the internal structure of this noun phrase. Um, so, so it's the dog in the park. In the city. Oops, the city. Sorry. So this, the city is this noun phrase. Again, I've used this triangle notation to hide the full structure under here. So what do I have? I have 
an entire noun phrase, which is the dog in the park in the city, and notice that I've now recursively applied this prepositional phrase. So I have park in the city as an end bar here. I've used there to create uh, to uh, I put there in front of this end bar to form a noun phrase. And then I have the second prepositional phrase in the park in the city. And that itself modifies dog. And you can see how you can get entire chains of prepositional phrases mo uh, modifying each other in, in the way I've just shown.